Southeast today. Our top stories tonight. The Sussex MP who says she's received a death threat after voting against extending the free school meal scheme. We'll have the latest with our political editor in Hastings. A desperate plea from families to be allowed to see their loved ones in care homes, describing the current restrictions as cruel. I think you can probably say that prisoners are getting more visits than people like my father. Also in tonight's programme, the Sussex anti-natal group exclusively for LGBT parents who say they had nowhere else to go. At the controls of the hurricane her father flew during the war, Eugenie Brooks takes to the skies of Kent for the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. And the four-note melody written by a former Sussex music teacher living with dementia gets its world premiere as an orchestral masterpiece. Good evening, a Sussex Conservative MP says she's among a number of politicians who've received death threats after they voted against offering free meals to children during the school holidays. Sally Ann Hart was one of 322 MPs who last week voted against the Labour motion, which came after a campaign kick-started by Manchester United and England striker Marcus Rashford, calling for an extension to the provision of free school meals. The Hastings and Rye MP says since the vote she's received vile threats. Our political editor Lauren Moss has this report. Its polarised political debate prompted calls for a government rethink from members of their own party. And now at least one South East MP says she's even received a death threat. Sally Ann Hart has reported it to the police. But while announcing a revamp of hospital food today, the Prime Minister said he was sticking to policy, not offering meal vouchers during the half-term holiday, and says other support is available. This is something that we need to, to focus on, the issue of holiday hunger. But the way to deal with it, we think, is by increasing uh, the, the funds available for universal credit, we put up by about a thousand a year. Marcus Rashford's campaign has seen organisations and businesses like the Prince Albert pub in Hastings take matters into their own hands and offer free lunches this week. The furlough scheme's coming to an end, people are losing their jobs. Uh, it just isn't as accessible for people to get food all the time. According to government figures, a quarter of children in Hastings live in income-deprived households. Sam is a single mum. She's a part-time nurse and has recently applied for universal credit. Her daughter doesn't usually receive free school meals, but she says extra support will be welcome for her and other families who are struggling. I do know people who have really struggled um, to, to feed their kids and have actually gone without, you know, adults, parents that have gone without so that they can feed their kids. Meals are being offered across the South East. At the centre in Margate, bags have been prepared for people to collect discreetly. Organisers say the community has pulled together. People have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, every day some people are dropping crisps in, bread in, uh, milk, uh, all, all the essentials that people need. Uh, so, yeah, it's, yeah we're getting, we are being helped by the local community. But there's also been an unpleasant backlash. The MP for Hastings and Rye, Sally Ann Hart, has called the abuse and threats she and other politicians have received disconcerting and unacceptable. She says no child should ever go hungry and there needs to be more done to tackle the root causes. Local authorities have been given £63 million to help those in need during the pandemic. The government isn't changing its mind. But another vote could be held after half term. That one will likely be about meals over Christmas. Well, our political editor Lauren Moss is in Hastings for us now. Lauren, we've been hearing what's been happening there, but what else has been going on in other parts of the southeast? Well, meals have been laid on across the southeast. And different organisations like Crawley Town Football Club, Seaford Town Football Club, and individual schools like Hearts Down Academy in Margate. Medway Council is offering uh, free meals throughout half term to the 6,000 children who are eligible. And tonight, Kent County Council has announced a
a dedicated helpline to, to help families who may need extra support. Anyone who needs to can get in touch and receive a £15 voucher per child. Now, the, the government and Boris Johnson is robustly defending the stance on this tonight, reminding people how much has been done since the start of the pandemic, increasing universal credit payments by £20 a week and £380 million worth of, of vouchers, food vouchers that went out over Easter and the summer holidays. But this row isn't going away, Charlie. Uh, tonight, Marcus Rashford's petition has over 900,000 signatures. OK, Lauren Moss in Hastings, thank you. Well, let's take a closer look at how many students could be entitled to free school meals. In Kent, as of last month, more than 52,500 pupils were eligible for free school meals. That's more than a fifth of all school children in the county. In Medway, Medway around 6,000 pupils, or 12.5% of all school children, are eligible. While in East Sussex, 13,800 can receive free school meals, more than a fifth of school children. And in Brighton and Hove, more than 6,400 children are eligible, which again is around a fifth of all pupils in the city. While well, more than 200 children's authors and illustrators have put their names to an open letter condemning the government's vote against extending free school meals for children in England over half term. The woman behind that letter is children's author Anne Booth, who lives in Kent, and, and uh, we can speak to her now. Uh, Anne Booth, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, this is an issue that's very close to your heart, isn't it? Oh yes, because um, I'm a children's writer, so when I write books I don't want the children who are reading them to be hungry. And it's just really basic. You know, I'm a mum as well, but it's just a basic thing that children who are hungry can't concentrate. And if they're seeing their parents are worried about where they're going to get their next food, then that also affects them. And we've heard paediatricians say that children who are not eating enough, they're, they're, it affects their brains. So, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't seem to be a, anything to argue about, really. I think it's a cross-party political issue. You know, nobody should be disagreeing about this. And if Wales and Scotland can do it, why can't we do it for English children? Why are we adding this added insecurity? And why are MPs debating whether families are responsible enough or whether it should happen this way or that way? So highlighting and making it feel worse for the people who need it. You know, we're in a pandemic. I don't see why we can't just get on with it. Well, the government would say they have been getting on with it. They would say that they've been pumping billions of pounds into income support and other welfare measures. They've mentioned uh, today the universal credit scheme and £63 million as well given to councils to help people struggling to afford food and essentials. So the government are doing a lot, aren't they? Yes, but well, just so looking at it from the outside, I don't understand why English children are being treated differently from Welsh and Scottish children. And we know that the councils have had so much pressure on them for so many things. You can't use the same amount of money to do so many different things.